And I first got to know you when I was a kid. We've known each other, God, since both mm-hmm. of the yeah, right. We opened up the Westin. Yeah. Up the Westin mm-hmm. together, which is now the Omni. Mm-hmm. So I've known Chef Dev incredibly long time. Mm-hmm. And when he went off on his own, and that's when we'll get into the segment of mm-hmm. becoming from a chef owner, it was an incredibly mm-hmm. proud thing. And mm-hmm. I was one of the first guests. I was there the second night, not the first mm-hmm. night, but I was there the second night that he opened Parkside, mm-hmm. and it's an amazing destination. So let's talk about mm-hmm. a little bit about that. How did you get involved? Why did you want to be a chef? Well, I've been a chef my whole life. I went to RISD for culinary. You know, I graduated in 1984. Cheers, you know, I've just always been interested in the food. You know, I was always worked in some kind of outlet in the food industry. And one thing just kind of led to another. And then, you know, I started pursuing culinary more and more. So then I tried to refine my skills by going to Royal School of Design for culinary. And my, my career just took off from that. I just enjoyed what I did immensely. So it really wasn't a job. It was something that it was, it was enjoyable to do every day. So we just... And that's interesting because I, yeah. I found out that they discontinued that program. Yeah. Chef Tara, who was yeah. my first guest on today, yeah. was saying the same thing, that you guys went to school yeah. together. Yeah, together. Yeah, yeah same exactly. class. Yeah. Very same year. Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah. So yeah. I think that... The, and yeah. that's two people who stayed in Rhode Island, yeah. folks. you got to pay attention yeah. to that. Two chefs that went to culinary school together have stayed in Rhode Island. And he stayed at RISD for a little while teaching. That's what he told me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He's very talented. So you went on from that. Yeah. You loved it. You had a passion for it. Yeah. What did you want to do from being a chef to an owner? Well, it, it, actually, you know, I was at the Western Hotel at the time. And actually, before I was at the Western Hotel, I was, at the, I was doing some work for the owners of the Amsterdam's restaurant. Oh, that's yeah. So, yeah. you know, I ate all the owners, and then you know, doing some clubs. So it was kind of in between a little bit, you know, the Western Hotel after. Uh, became with the owners. Uh, they, oh, no, actually, what happened was I became friends with the owners, and I went to the Western Hotel after doing some work. Okay. So then after a trip to the Western Hotel, uh, I became friends with the owners. We go out every now and then, and they just they invited me to go out to lunch, and uh, we sat around, we started talking, and then one thing just kind of led to it. It wasn't looking, it just kind of for you. Yeah, the space, you know, so I go out to Amsterdam, and from that, that's where the pops Kind of right. took, you know, root. So it's funny. So we're, we're an Islander. You know, I'm a transplant, but now feel like I've been a true island because I'm here longer than where I grew up. Is that Amsterdam? You know, and Parkside yeah. has been there how many years now? Twenty, little over twenty. That's what we call the restaurant. <laughs> it's, it's, Actually, it's like, when we were, uh, the wasn't here. That's right. Uh, That's right. We, you know, the Western Hotel was there, but not the Towers. What a place! Park Towers weren't here. Uh, Capital Grill. There was just a few restaurants that was down here, and that was the beginning of the Renaissance of progress. Right, absolutely, with Buddy C and C and the, you know all that kind of stuff. We did the restaurant challenge. challenges. Right? We did the uh, uh, Julia Child. Absolutely, we had crew races. So and, Steve and I did a dinner for Julia Child way back when. For those of you that are too young, go look her up. For those of you that are not, she was the, an inspiration to everyone. So, um, so talk a little bit about Parkside. So you became the chef. You took over Amsterdam yeah. space. It's been twenty years. Yeah. So now you're a chef. Yeah. You're an owner. You've elevated Parkside to this mm-hmm. destination. You, you, by the way, Parkside lunch and dinner—it's mm-hmm. always packed. It's a phenomenal destination for both lunch and dinner, which not a lot of places can do lunch. It's a, it's a challenging thing well, to do. Part of it's our location, right. you know, being between the, the courthouse houses, yeah. and you know RISD behind us, and Brown, and you know Textron, some corporations, and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. But also, I believe it's you know part of our philosophy mm-hmm. when we were open. We wanted to give value. It wasn't just, okay, let's open for lunch. And yeah. so, you know, we knew people at lunchtime, they have a certain point, so we were able to not just give them value, be able to get their in and out in a certain time. So creating a vision, how do you describe Parkside? Well, Parkside was basically, I mean, when I first bought it, like I said, it was just, it kind of all just happened. So one night we were just kind of sitting there, so, okay, we, we bought the place, now what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. So and it was, like I said, the beginning of the Renaissance of Providence. So the park across the street was just, being finished, all the bricks were being put down. They were finished in the right. uh, the monument, all that kind of stuff. You know, so all that would it really finished. So we kept looking and looking around. It's kind of like you know, batting on brain. What, what kind of restaurant are we gonna be? What style are we gonna be? So kind of looking out front, and then we saw a park. So you know, park site. So just because of Memorial Park, we were across the street from yeah. that. So that came to the root. So and then it was another thing is we just didn't want it. There was a lot of Italian restaurants and you know that kind of stuff. So, so we wanted to be we wanted to be a little, a little something different at that time. So, so there wasn't many like uh, uh, French style bistros around. Yeah. So that's when we kind of started leaning towards that kind of menu and the rotisserie cooking and you know so, being a little different than a lot of restaurants. That's interesting too because you're kind mm-hmm. of like you're that gateway to the side. You literally mm-hmm. are. 
on the other side of the river. Okay. So you're that gateway to the east side when mm -hmm. you're going up there. So mm -hmm. from a rotisserie standpoint, I mean, I'm sure there is, but mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time thinking of anybody else that has the style of play yeah. that you do. In the 20 years that you've been there, you guys have evolved. I mean, yeah. originally you started as a rotisserie, mm -hmm. became more and more, adding mm -hmm. amazing dishes mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. I literally had the duck there two mm -hmm. weeks ago. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. I was in there for is this evolution for you and, and and I want to get into how you know you mentor and the people that you brought in that work mm -hmm. with you but this evolution for you is it been ongoing is there things that inspire you for it or? Hey, well that's that's the food trends period the restaurant industry the hospitality industry it's always changing it's always evolving uh, new trends new eating habits so you know we just always kept growing and you know different menus we try to do seasonally that kind of stuff and not so much just to change the things but people's eating habits change. Their their dietary change. Uh, uh, their lifestyle changes. That's true. That's you know. True. So you know. If, but we always wanted to be a casual type of restaurant. Right. Well, you felt comfortable just to come in and sat at the bar, had a you know a cheese board and a glass of wine. You, you know that kind of stuff. You've got these great yeah. cafe tables. So if you go into Parkside and you enter the door, there's these what, four or five cafe tables in the front, right in the window front area. Yeah. So you've got these great cafe yeah. tables, and then you've got the bar. So you feel like you mm -hmm. can be casual and comfortable mm -hmm. and and sit there and relax. Yeah. And from a mentoring standpoint, so talking about, again, the chef ownership trans, you know, transformation, you've had a lot of people that have come through there from Johnson & Wales, some others. Some RISD, just, right. you know, chefs that have been around, and it's just, it's just... So what's your, let's, let's call it a big piece of advice, what's your big piece of advice for people that think that they may want to do this perspective from a chef to an owner? Think twice. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot of work. It's yeah, lot because of work. it's not just about the food anymore. When you become the owner, yeah. you know, there's more in depth to you know, uh, you know, licensing when you before you open, legal stuff, accounting stuff, you know, tax formation. Uh, you have to have a lot know, of yeah, yeah, you, it, you know, so you know, being in the business, it's you know, it's a seven days, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Because even if you're not even open for lunch, you still need time to do. All that paper administrative stuff so yeah. you know starting up we were small so you know we learned as we went along so yeah. as we went, went along you know we grew you know we might have made a couple of mistakes here and there you know that part of, but then we just keep going forward you know just keep right. never say never just right. always keep trying different things and, and, and a lot like what i was talking about earlier you have a lot of the the seasonality so how you change your menus hmm. how you bring things like you said you yeah. evolve for the yeah. times and the trends that are there yeah. but if you would say yeah. So uh, there's two last questions yeah. I have here. So th there's two things. So if you would say you had an influence, yeah. you know, beyond the style and how you chose the mm -hmm. restaurant, was there one thing that influenced you in one way or another? Uh, that New York style restaurants, like that real, like, long, you know, comfortable. So it actually, because we by the times, a couple oh, of times, Sorry. and they, you know, they said Poxai, you know, has always been the only restaurant in the state of Rhode Island that feels like you're in Manhattan. I but agree. it just has that. Architectural style of the restaurant. It does, you know, right. where the kitchen's yeah. out in the middle of the dining room, the bar. You go to a lot of and it's an restaurants, open kitchen. and it's an open kitchen. So you, yeah. you know, and that was an unheard of. I mean, that you didn't have that in Rhode Island. I mean, you know, you didn't have the bistro style restaurant. Yeah, so it all you became. You started your own trend of it. Well, you know, there really yeah. wasn't many bistros. It was, you know, there was a lot of Italian restaurants. I mean, the Capitol Grill, the uh, you know seafood place here and there. Yeah. But you had a cafe. The Volvo was just you know new too. It's true. Uh, yeah. Capriccios, Camille's, and some of the old school restaurants. You know, Raphael's was over on uh, South Water Street. That's uh, true. You know, a lot of Italian kind of restaurants. Yeah, we're dating you know. ourselves a lot here. Yeah, I know, but that's. <laughs> so I have to yeah. say, I mean, from a, a true perspective, is that beyond being friends with Steve, is that his restaurant is absolutely phenomenal. He follows so much stuff. He's got such an amazing menu and amazing staff. So my last question is before we close it out is for the day, and this is my first segment, so I'm truly appreciative of you being here for me, oh. is plans. Is there any big plans, anything new on the horizon we should know about for you? Uh, not really. We just, you know, we just, you know, we had a fire five years ago. We just right. renovated the whole place, you know, you know, four and a half years ago. Uh, so, you know, we're just, the whole place inside is all completely, a little bit different, same footprint. Uh, we just came out with new me menus uh, uh, in right. January and also a whole new beverage program. So, you know, that, and that's, like I said, that's a constant building, right. you know, constant wine list. It's, you know, it's not something you just, okay, here is a piece of paper with your wines on it. It's something that keeps evolving. And Every week you talk to salespeople, you try to match your wines to what right. you are, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, it, it's yeah. interesting to, to bring that up to, to close out is the, the fire. I mm -hmm. have to give you a yeah. tremendous mm -hmm. amount of credit because. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people from a business perspective, whether you're a restaurateur or any other business, that to experience what you guys had and 
bring it back and build it is an absolutely amazing yeah. thing. So I have to give you a lot of credit yeah. for that. Thank you. You're an amazing chef. Yeah. He has an amazing restaurant. I thank Chef Davenport for being my final guest this yeah. afternoon. And with that, we close yeah. out the taste for the week, and we'll start again next week. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.